So what are the five things that enable us to get children to develop mastery? The first thing is that we absolutely have to have a consistent approach to the development of models and images through the school. So taking a developmental approach to models and images is quite different from each teacher in each classroom having a particular model or a particular image that they rather like using. So we build up the use of the number line through from the number track in reception and the pegged line to the beaded bar and the beaded strings up to the landmark line and then the empty number line which we use and the number lines that we use for decimals and for negative numbers the, the concept is developed, the model is developed as the concepts change and develop through the school. So a consistent approach to the use of models and images is, I think, a real strength of the Abacus scheme. And it's not only the models and images, it's the vocabulary that goes with them. And actually, do you know what? That's not just the maths vocabulary. Yes, the maths vocabulary is consistent and it is tight. We're careful about the terms we use. But it's also the, uh, the pedagogic vocabulary, the things like spider, who counts in tens, the things like fly, who counts in ones, the things like frog, who finds the difference. The second thing is that children who have mastered targets have a really good bank of memorised number facts. They remember, they don't have to be retaught the three times table because they've got it like that. Now, I know that every teacher is saying, oh yeah, right, because we're all in a position where children are quite poor at memorising. The reasons for that lie outside the context of the school. Routine memorisation is no longer a part of daily life. Technology has obviated the need for routinised memorisation. But on Abacus, we have taken seriously the idea that if children are to retain taught memorised facts, we need to rehearse them. And we need to rehearse them little and often. It's no good doing a big lesson on the three times table in year five because one, you haven't got the time, and two, they should have remembered it from year three. And indeed nowadays from year two. So what we want to do is keep those memorised facts absolutely secure. Thirdly, we have the concept of overlearning. And what we're looking at is for children to master specific age-related targets. And one of the ways that we have to approach this is that the fundamental concepts and the basic skills have to be not just rehearsed, but deepened. And the way we do that is we do a lot of overlearning. When you're doing something new, you are using the basic concepts and the, sk the fundamental skills that you have learned previously. So every time we do what we call a frog subtraction, which is a counting up subtraction along the number line. Every time we do a counting up subtraction, every time frog hops from 78 to 80 and from 80 to 100 and from 100 to 121, we are rehearsing place value and number facts. Fourthly, we are actually thinking about the level of practice that is needed. We know that the amount of mathematical practice, the amount of actual practice of skills and algorithms needs to be increased. This, is, um, this has been on the agenda for a while and it's now really quite definitely the case. Ofsted recognise this, DfE certainly recognise it. We need to increase the amount of practice we do. Also, we need to think, are we going to be sending some parts of the practice home? Is there a context at home in which we can do that practice? We need to think about different contexts for practice, like games, and contexts for practice where they practicing in the context of an investigation or a reasoning problem. So in the context of doing an investigation, children may do 20, even 30, sometimes 40 calculations on the way to finding something out. Lastly, we come back to the question of differentiation and the question of how we teach the whole class to the same set of age-related expectations. And the difficulty here is that actually the class that I get right now is not all at the same level. Their children are not all completely identical in terms of their ability to access this specific target. So the first thing we say is we provide the prerequisites. Okay, this target, these are the prerequisites. What piece of teaching could I do which might be address the 
prerequisites to this target, which would still be aiming for the same thing. So as far as Ofsted's concerned, we are still all aiming for this target, but this particular group is addressing the prerequisites to that. And I have specific activities easily found linked to that prerequisite so that I can provide suitable material for those children whilst we are all on track for the same target. And secondly, it is the case that we need constant intervention. And our phrase here is keep up, don't catch up. Actually, if we can do constant small intervention, children can be keeping up with what it is that we are doing. Some children just need a bit more. They need a little bit more attention before they've got something. But if we give it to them, that little bit more, then they will be enabled to keep up. And that will actually make life easier for us because we are more likely to be able to be addressing the same things with a larger group of children.